testing. There we go. Good morning, everybody. It works if you turn it on. Morning, Jamie. Good morning, everybody. Everybody say good morning to Jamie. Good morning. <laughs> How cool is that? He comes riding in on his bicycle yesterday and helped us build a ramp. So we uh, we had a good time. We uh, built a ramp for Jimmy Sparkman yesterday, and I want to thank everybody for uh, being there to do that. It's, it's really neat when you can build a ramp for somebody, and it's like they get their freedom. And then we were able to pray with him, and uh, we just had a good time working together. Well, I'd like to welcome our guests. I see some new uh, faces this morning. Uh, we're glad you're here. Um, our kids worship with us, and after worship, then we release them to go back. The, the kids' uh, area is behind the wall right here, and all the classrooms are labeled uh, according to age and uh, grade. So you're welcome to, to have them worship with us, and then go back, and we'll dismiss them for Sunday school. Uh, to get started, does anybody know who this is? It's a man's Bible. And Amanda was here, and it was left on her table while they purchased something. Uh, it, it's Kyle's? Oh, that's going to cost him to get this back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, I knew somebody would be missing it. We found the owner. Get in here, dude. You've been without the word for a week or better. Well, I've been looking for it. You're welcome. Thank God. It was on Amanda's table. I asked him yesterday. Yeah. How cool. See, God's good. Tim and Mitch, you guys want to come up here? We want to have a, a couple of the team members every week talk to us about our missions trip coming up in September. Um... Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't we have close to $3,000 raised for our, our mission? $3,200. $3, for our project. And we had, we had a $6,000 goal. So we're over halfway. Isn't that cool? But I just want uh, Tim and Mitch to share from their heart uh, why they, they're going on this trip and, and maybe what it's uh, going to mean to them. And Karen, can I have the microphone for him? I'm sorry. I think it's on, Tim. Hello. Okay. Um, it well, is. it's uh, yeah. the mission thing. It's been a little bit, I don't know, intimidating or scary to me. But, you know, in the last two months, it seems like things have happened in me and my wife's life and family that... Um, seem overwhelming and every time I read something I just open the Bible up and read a, a page out of it and and I'm not very good at going through a whole chapter or whatever but just picking stuff and it's always every time it it, it just strikes you and says this is what you got to do quit worrying fear my wife was in an accident three weeks ago and um, she was worried and we were worried that the person that she was in an accident was something was going to happen there and, and that day I opened the Bible up and said Hey, don't fear evil. Mm -hmm. Evil's, I'll take care of evil. You take care of what you got to take care of today. Right. And worry about today only. And just do that. So, sure. And it's just been, it's been amazing that if you just believe that and live that, that it's all going to take care of it. He's going to take care of everything for us. So I'm just going to go into this mission and um, do whatever he wants me to do. And be open to whatever it takes that i got to do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I, I just know God's going to work through us and, Amen. And, and do good things. We may not see it. We may not know what it is, but it's going to happen. So. Amen. Good so. word. I was kind of the same way, not so much intimidation-wise, but kind of I was indifferent about mission trips. Like I hear about I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, they do that, and it's, it's a great thing, but I don't need to go on it. Like, you know, and you have that thing like, oh, it'll fill up, and I don't need to go. And so they announced it the first week. And Dad asked me, do you want to go on this? And I said, I mean, yeah, I'd like to go. But in the back of my head, I was thinking, it'll fill up quick. I don't need to go. And it didn't fill up. 
And then the next week they said, well, it's, there's, there's a room open. You know, I was like, ah, I'm not going to go in it. And then the next week, there's a room open. And I was like, man, it keeps sticking out in the announcements. Like, why, why is this? And I thought to myself, like, oh, God's saying, you need to go on this. Mm-hmm. You need to go. You need to go yeah. do this. I was like, okay. And so I've just kind of, like, that's so just left myself open. And whatever God needs me to do down there, I'm going to do. And however he needs me to do it, I'm going to do it. So I'm excited for it. I'm ready. And I'm excited to go. Cool. How awesome. And that's, uh, that's one of the neat things that uh, we do. If, if me as a pastor could have the desire of my heart, it would be for every single one of you in this room to go on a missions trip. Just one time. It is life changing. And uh, it's just really neat to, uh, to be able to experience that. So thank you, Tim and uh, Mitch. And I, I'm hoping our hearts get pumped to be able to to keep uh, uh, sacrificing until we get that 6,000 raised so we can go down there and do a mighty work for the Lord. Um, like they said, the biggest thing that we need to do uh, in, in God's walk, uh, whether it be a missions trip or just our daily walk, is be flexible, be flexible, be flexible. And be open to do what God wants us to do. Uh, I think that's a good word for us all today. Well, uh, our offering envelopes are in the back of the chairs. And uh, we ask everybody here at Destiny to come prepared to give. Uh, We use uh, 2 Corinthians 9-7 for our scripture. And it tells us, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And you all are cheerful givers. Uh, it, it's amazing that we've got that money half raised already and, and a lot of the things we've done here in the last several months at Destiny to reach out. And it's going to be mission minded. And God tells us in Matthew 28 to go. And that's what we've been trying to do here at Destiny. And church, when we do that, it takes finances. And you have been faithful to not only tithe, but to give offerings over and above your tithe um, to do that. And I want to thank you. Are you guys ready to praise God? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's release everything to God this morning. You know a lot of us have got some really heavy burdens, some things tough going on in our lives. And uh, we're here in God's house this morning and, and uh, we're among friends and family. And we can release the mess that we have in our lives and turn it over to God. Music and song lighten our hearts. It lightens mine. When I start singing, it just releases and, and lets all that mess and trouble. Uh, Mary and I have been tired all morning. We're just wore out from the week. And you know what? Song and praise will enlighten us and build us up and encourage us. So let the Holy Spirit uh, fill this place and touch your need right where you're at. Every one of us in this room have a different need. And God is a God Almighty and He can meet every one of those needs right where we're at. So let's trust Him this morning. Uh, God the Father loves it when we sing His praises. Uh, As the worship team comes up to get us started, I want to pray for our school system and the teachers and the kids. Don't you think that'd be a good idea? Um, How many of you noticed the tragedy with the school bus over in DeKalb County? That thing caught on fire and burned up and they got the kids off of it. What a a blaze, a, a deal. Um, You know from the past experience with all the things that DeKalb County has been through in their school system, we've seen that school system tight knit. Uh, They welcome prayer. They welcome God to intervene in that thing. And you know what? I I truthfully can say I feel deep in my spirit. That's why nobody got hurt on that bus. They've allowed God to intervene. And you know what? Our, our school system's just somewhat little uh, tight on that, that aspect. So we're just going to pray today uh, for the kids, uh, for the teachers, for the faculty, uh, all of them, to just be blessed this year.
Our kids are our prized possession. They not the, they're not the future church. They are the church right now. They're here with us. And uh, I just want to uh, bless this, the service here and, and uh, our kids in the school. Father, we thank you so much for Destiny Family of Faith. We thank you for a safe place that we can come and let all our cares and concerns uh, be placed upon you. Lord, we've come to worship you and praise you. We've come to lift you up. You alone are worthy of the praise and glory and honor. And Lord, your word tells us if we have anything on our heart, any desires, any need to cry out to you, and in Jesus' name, you'll supply that need. And Lord, we're lifting up our East Noble uh, School Corporation and DeKalb and the surrounding uh, West Noble, Alban, all our school system in our, our community here, we lift them up to you, Lord, this morning. Our kids are headed back to school. And Lord, we just pray a hedge of protection around them. We pray that they can hear and learn good, healthy things that will cause them to be good citizens and usable spirits for your glory and your honor. Lord, I pray a blessing over all the teachers. What precious people teachers are. Lord, they dedicate their hearts and their lives, their every being into teaching. So Lord, we just ask in Jesus' name to bless those teachers with everything they need to instill life and knowledge and wisdom into our children as they go to school each and every day. Lord, we pray a blessing over the bus drivers, over the principals, all the staff in our schools. Lord, bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, they are a viable part of our community. And Lord, we need your hand of favor over them. And Lord, if they're not willing, you just draw them close. Lord, use your word and your truth to be a life-changing situation in all our schools. Lord, we again commit this service to you. Ask your Holy Spirit to settle down over us and bless the worship team as they lead us in song and praise to you because you and you alone are worthy of that praise. And it's in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. If you are willing and able, um, please stand. If, if not, don't, there's no condemnation here. If you need to sit, please feel you can praise right. the Lord on your knees. You can praise the Lord in a chair. You can stand. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Amen. Also, if you can't sing, don't worry about it. The Lord, Thank you. The Lord <laughs> will not have a problem with it. And if you can't sing, there are times when we lift our voice and praise the Lord. Just lift your voice and praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the we Lord. praise you, Lord. Yes. 
sing in glory and honor and power forever. To Him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To Him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Blessing and glory and honor and power, blessing and glory and honor and power, blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Be blessing and glory and honor and power, blessing and glory and honor and power, blessing. Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Blessing and honor and glory to your name, Lord. We praise you. We honor you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord.
song. I'll bring you more than a song. Looking into my heart, looking into my heart. You're looking into my heart, looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Forgive us when we come to this place, Lord, and we don't give our all, Lord. Please help us, Father, to truly, to truly worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth, Lord. That is what you desire, Lord, is worship that is in spirit and in truth, Father. And we're all guilty, Lord, before you. We're all guilty. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Lord. But we know there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we just praise you. We give you all our glo your glory and honor that you deserve, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain the song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire it's every tribe every tongue every nation a love song born of a grateful children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, to all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, let it rise above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings true. God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's 
my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I I'm desperate for you. without you Jesus I'm desperate for you I'm lost without you I'm desperate for you desperate for you I need you Jesus I'm lost without you so thankful that you're in our midst that you're within us Lord Lord we're desperate for you we take air we take breath for granted so badly Lord you're our everything you're the glue that holds everything in this universe together and without you, we're nothing. Lord, there are people in this room right now that are desperate for you. They're crying out. And Lord, we know you hear their cry. We thank you for the word that you gave Karen this morning. Truth. Lord, it's truth that sets us free. We thank you for your word and song that's truth. And yea and amen. We thank you for Jesus, the living word that touches each and every one of us in this room right where we're at. Lord, none of us in this room are where we need to be, but thank God we are not where we used to be. We're a work in progress. You've sanctified each one of us, set us apart for your glory and your honor. Lord, help us to be low and lift you high. Lord, I see you on your throne high and lifted up. I see Jesus at your right hand. And he's looking down on us right now and calls us holy, upright, and precious and righteous. Thank God for Jesus because without his grace, without his intervention, Lord, we'd still be lost. Thank you for your blood that cleanses each one of us as white as snow. You are God Almighty, the great I Am. And we thank you for that. We trust in you. We stand firm. And our feet are planted on holy ground, Jesus. Thanks to you. Go with our kids to class. Anoint the teachers to teach them, Lord. Let them grow and learn more about you. Bless the word that we have in front of us from Judges this morning. You are God, and we're grateful for that. And we thank you and praise you, and we do it all in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said amen. amen. Love on somebody before you sit down. Jamie.
it's neat to uh, look out over the congregation this morning and uh, uh, see some uh, answered prayer. Uh, we've been singing this morning and praising God for doing that. And we've got Chris here. We prayed for him last Wednesday night. And uh, he went through his first treatment with flying colors. And uh, we're, we're counting on him uh, having answered prayer. Um, the Lord has told him, or the, the doctors have told him that he's got cancer in his lungs and in his uh, brain. But uh, we know that God's going to deliver him. He's going to touch him and heal him in a mighty way. So uh, we just thankful that Chris is here this morning. Lil Iams back there with Carrie. Uh, wave your hand, buddy. Can you do that for us? He said, no way, Jose. <laughs> But that little guy got his leg operated on. Uh, for those of you that maybe don't know him, his leg it was twisted way out. And they were able to take some dead uh, 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 bone out of him and, and replace it with a, a graft. And uh, they got that leg 50% straightened up. And he's got a device and appliance on him. And Carrie and Kyle are going to have to twist that a little bit. And it's going to straighten that leg right up. And they're sure confident that he's going to be able to walk good as gold uh, when he's done so uh, what a blessing what a blessing it is for our doctors to sacrifice their time and and uh, their income to be able to bless a, a young gentleman like that and then Vicki Sloan's back here and Rob she got Rob home uh, is he feisty not yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll, we're, uh, he just come out of that uh, with no cancer. Uh, they were able to hook that uh, intestine back together. And, and uh, I, I don't know what God has in store for Rob, but uh, it, it's going to be mighty. It's going to be powerful for us to watch what God does with Rob and that family. Um, Way too young to be going through what he's gone through, but God's delivered him every time. Right. So church, I want us to just hang on to that. Um, since Melissa has taken her administration job at the Christian school down to Merriam, uh, I'm here most of the time. Uh, if nothing changes, Maya is going to come, and uh, she was the girl with sin, the tall, skinny girl, long hair. She's going to try to take some of uh, Melissa's office duties, and then she's going to help Brian and Jenny and, and Randy with the youth and work into that position, hopefully. So um, I said all that to say I'm not tech savvy with the, the cell phone, so you don't get text alerts from me. I'm still emailing. We're running about 38% open rate, which means there's 60% not opening it. When you see an email like that, open that thing. You can see the blessings in here this morning. Church from 38% praying. Do you know what would happen if we could get a 95% open rate? Yes. Oh my word. It would put millions of angels to flight. So I'm just saying that to encourage you. Oh no, not another stupid email. I just cleared mine. I got 240 on mine. So lah. I don't care about your emails. But when you see Destiny Family Faith and it says pray, 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 I want you to click on that baby and open it and read it. Because you are destiny life changers when you do that and lift people up in prayer. We were able to lay hands on Chris Wednesday night and he said he felt a heat flow through him. He knew God was near and touched him when we laid hands on him and prayed. That is what it's about, church. God is so... So good. And I just wanted to bring up those praises. So we don't hear them often enough. God is working and moving. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And if we quit seeing miracles work in our church, we might as well lock the door and go home and forget it. You get so comfortable with a miracle that when it doesn't happen, you get uncomfortable. God is a miracle working God and he wants to answer your needs. Uh, Karen, you want to come up and she, I know she doesn't, but uh, we're having a church picnic next Sunday. And uh, I'm excited. We're going to invite the community and uh, 
hopefully the the youth can uh, take some flyers out to surrounding homes and we're going to put the sign out here by the road and and just invite people to come and be a part of destiny uh, we hope they come to serve us but they're more than welcome to just come for the picnic so uh, she's going to talk to us about that okay we're really excited and i don't feel the excitement at all um so <laughs> i thought i'd get up here and try to excite you it's next sunday we hope to start eating at around 12 30. Um, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill and we're asking you to bring a covered dish and we have all kinds of games planned for the kids we're expecting a sunny day so we're gonna have a hat contest I want you to wear your happiest funniest silliest picnic hat whatever you have in your closet put it on we're gonna have a contest and pick a winner and there's gonna be a great prize for that and we're also gonna have bingo for anyone who likes to put the little corn on the card and we'll have prizes for that too but um, most of all I like the picnic and the different out ideas outside this uh, sanctuary area so we can talk and relax and get to know each other better um, maybe find out each other's hurts and mm -hmm. uh, be able to pray more for each other as well as um, enjoy and laugh and and um, I hold hands and be be a unit. Um, when we started the church, it was about family, and it still is. Um, we love family, and I know God loves family more. And we want this unit of people to grab arms and be family and love each other. Um, uh, sometimes we sit beside each other every Sunday, and we don't even. And I'm I'm guilty too. We don't even know um, anything about each other except they come to church and they're reaching out. For Christ which is our prayer for everybody in this whole community to find Christ there he's their strength in their life and you think oh a church picnic what's that gonna do you cannot believe the messages we hear after that oh I didn't know this about so-and-so or um, did you know that we need to be praying for so-and-so so, -and -so? so um, this is more than eating and playing bingo. This is about a fellowship with each other. And I'm hoping you all plan on coming. I hope you bring your family, your friends, um, your neighbors, anybody that like to eat some hot dogs and hamburgers and have fun. Come on out next week. Amen. She didn't have anything to say. No, not really. <laughs> We're going to set the tent up on Saturday. Uh, we could use four or five people, it takes about 20 minutes. But what we really need to do is to have several of you come early so we can carry the tables out under the tent and set the chairs up. Um, we're going to talk about evil in a little bit. And there's some evil people in our area. And I know those tables and chairs won't be there Sunday morning when we come if we set them up Saturday. So uh, we could use some help Sunday morning and we'll get that area set up. And uh, Tammy, a lot of you girls that are gifted, uh, love to be with the kids and have games. Dream up some things you can do with the kids. And uh, if you need some money to get that accomplished, we'll be glad to do it. Ladies' Night Out is the 19th of August at 6.30. Uh, Tiffany always has a cool thing planned for the women and uh, they all enjoy being together. Uh, preschool. School open house is uh, August 15th at 5:30. Tammy's going to have an open house here, and if you're you're not sure what she does back here uh, behind that wall right there in this room, come and and be a part of that, and encourage the moms that are going to be here and the dads. Uh, 15th at 5:30. Warm Heart Ministry. We love to get that out that word out ahead of time so you can dedicate uh, the 22nd of this month. It's a Tuesday evening and we have to be over there uh, at least by 515. And uh, we, we make up crock pots of sloppy joes or just whatever kind of thing it is and bring dishes and we feed a bunch of people over there. And uh, then several of us that, that are called to do it, we, we just walk around and pray with people. And it is a blessed time. Uh, Steve and Diane have that ministry in Waterloo, and, and uh, we've adopted them as a, a mission outreach. So uh, we'd love to have you. There's a sign up out there, and you can sign up what you want to bring. And, and we don't need 30 people. We only need like four or five because it's we're limited in the space. So. Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of that. And again, I want to thank the Destiny Life Changers. Uh, when we send a message out to build 
the ramp. Uh, it's life changing for people. And um, we'd love to have some new faces come and, and enjoy that and be a part of it as we build a ramp uh, for somebody that, that has need. Well, uh, I'd like to talk to us the next couple of weeks here about Gideon. I was in Judges uh, one morning doing a devotion and, and reading about Gideon, and I couldn't quit reading about him. And the Lord just kept dropping things as I read the scripture. About every scripture I would read, every sentence, there was just a point that stuck out to me. Um, you know, it, it's we're, we're just filled with evil. Everywhere we look, there's evil. And God loves every one of us. He loves us right where we're at. There's nothing we can do in this earth to stop God's love. But there are some things we cannot do or do that will cause him to lift his hand of favor off us. And then it gets kind of rough and tough. And you know there are people around that when you talk to them, well, if your God was such a loving God, there wouldn't be abortion. There wouldn't be all this mess going on. Well, you know what? God allows evil. He didn't create it. He didn't desire it. But he allowed it to happen. So we in our weakness and in our storms, in our rough place, could draw back to him and serve him and love him and him only. And you know what, as, as we go along and, and uh, you read statistics, I read them on my pastoral website, uh, it's discouraging the, these things they're trying to say. Um, you know what, they don't have a clue. All they know is what's going on, the people they talk to and they ask the questions. I'm trusting that God's going to be God until he returns back. Uh, we're going to be strong. We're going to be bold for the witness. And uh, we're just going to keep our feet planted and staying firm. And we're going to do what God's called each one of us to do. But I read this story about Gideon. And uh, it's in 6, uh, 7, and 8 in Judges. And then he's mentioned again in Hebrews 11. Uh, he was a farmer and a judge and a military commander. And when I read that, I thought, how cool. You know, um, there were times my mom and dad and some of my family thought, uh, we need to be praying for Mike really bad. Because I'd get a different job. I'd have a job for a while and then I'd get another one. I wasn't without work, but I was getting a different job. And you know, as I look back on how God used me and my jobs and in my circumstances, everything he was doing was growing me up for such a time as this. It was amazing. I started out as a farm kid on a farm just on the west edge of Kenneville. I don't know if you noticed, they're, they're doing a lot of groundwork out there. They're going to put a truck stop in out there where I was born and raised. Just right across from the Shell gas station. A farm kid. My grandma owned where the new hospital is out there. And dad farmed that. So we, I grew up on a farm. I had chores, all kinds of things to do. And you know what? It really grows you as a person to be able to be a farm kid. To be able to have chores and responsibility. And then I went to vocational school at East Noble. When they opened up down there in 1969, um, I was in auto mechanics. And there were 16 of us graduated out of that vocational training and got mechanic jobs instantly. And I went to work just a, a, not even a half a mile from my house to Parker Niven Chevrolet, a mechanic. And then I, I quit and got into construction. And then I bought dump truck and drove semi. And then I got into my own rebuilding business, construction business. And, and then God called me to Beezer Homes in Fort Wayne. And in 2008, the crash came and I lost that job. And you know, everything God was doing helped me prepare for what he was calling me to do later. We were able to rebuild this church and just do all kinds of things because of the gifting that God blessed me with and blessed all of you with. 
It's so neat, the gifting and the opportunities that God gives us. A judge and a military commander. Every time he got stepped up with more responsibility and more need and a need for more trust. And that's what God does with us. Is he walks us on our journey. He prepares us and turns us loose to do what he's called us to do. And thank God we don't ever know what he's calling us to do completely or we hightail it. If I knew I'd be standing here right now, I'd have cut and run a long time ago. But he reveals it as we're ready. And some of us think, you know what? I prayed and prayed to God and he never answered. He's just taking his time until you're ready. Because if he gave you more than you could handle, you'd crush under the pressure and forget it all. So God's a God. He's a good God. He's the great I am. And like we said, he's the glue that holds it all together. Gideon is like many of us here in the sanctuary this morning. He had a whole lot of accomplishments. And I look across this sanctuary and I see people sitting in here that have accomplished a whole lot. Not only for God's kingdom, but for themselves and for the community. A lot of accomplishments in here. He had many strengths. There are a lot of you in here that are really strong people. And I've seen you in your weakness. Gideon had weakness too. I've been weak. Boy, the last year and a half was really hard on me. I, I struggled. And I had to pick myself up with my bootstraps. And trust on the Lord and lead into Him. And get back going for Him and the kingdom. We all have weaknesses. And along the way he had doubts. Has anybody in here ever doubted anything? Oh my gosh. Have you ever said why Lord? Why me? Or why him and not me? Doubt. Gideon when he got the call had a lot of doubts. And I just love that guy in this scripture we're going to dig into the next couple of weeks because he's us. Every one of us in this room can experience and relate to Gideon and what he goes through. There was a humility that was just unbelievable when you read about him. Uh, it caught God's attention. It changed Israelites' destiny. Church, you and I, each one of us have a calling. And that calling is not only for us to be saved, but it's for, for us to be able to reach out and change somebody's destiny. We all have a destiny. And if we don't focus, there's a destiny bigger than us, then we're going to get lost. Everybody has a destiny, and it's our choice where it ends up. It's God's provision that gets us there, but it's our choice to accept it. Because Jesus cried out, it's finished on the cross. And when he cried that out, it was done, church. We can do all things through Christ Jesus, who gives us the strength. Nothing is impossible with God. I want to drive that into our hearts and our minds the next couple of weeks. Everything you set out to do is possible if it's for God's glory and honor. It caused God to be glorified. In the end, God got all the glory. The things that Gideon is going to do in the next couple of weeks is impossible. And God allowed it to happen so that he would be high and lifted up. I appreciated the song that Steve and Mary sang this morning. We bow down. We get as low as we can so our Lord can be as lifted as high as he can be lifted. It is not about us. And oh my gosh, have I been on a pedestal and got knocked off that baby. The ground is harder than it used to be. I don't want to get on that pedestal anymore. It's hard. And then we're going to see in uh, Hebrews 11 that Gideon gets entered into the Hall of Fame faith. He's in there with the faithful, the mighty faithful people, Moses and Abraham and all the guys before that have been faithful. He gets entered into the Hall of Fame. And I don't know about you, but I really want my name in that book of life. 
Because if it ain't in there, I didn't make the trip, church. If your name's not in there, you didn't make the trip. We have to be entered in that hall of fame of faith. God wants to turn our weakness into victory. And he wants us to know nothing's impossible with him. Let's turn to uh, Luke 6 and we'll read the first 12 verses this morning. Did you get her loaded, Davey? Maybe God's given us a sign you all need to bring your Bibles. <laughs> Can we not get dependent on our screens? That wasn't in my notes. It's okay, I'll get started. Those of you that have your iPhones or your Bibles can follow. I'm in the New Living Translation, so that'll really mess you up. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. That's sickening, just to start out. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, in the caves, and the strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land, destroying crops as far away as Gaza. With friends like that, you sure don't need enemies. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, the goats, the cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes, coming with their livestock and tents, were as thick as locusts. They arrived in droves of camels too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the tree at Oprah, which belonged to Joash of the, Cab, of the clan of Abiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was thrust threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. That's the scripture. And you know what? There's some harsh, harsh words in there. Scary words. This story is about God's chosen people, Israel. And I wanted to look up Israel, the word Israel, because I didn't want to tell you wrong. I thought I remembered, but I wanted to look it up. Israel is a term used to refer to the true and obedient people of God. So whenever you read Israel in that scripture... We can put our names in there, church. We can put destiny in there. And boy, when you read it with your name in there, or Destiny Family of Faith's name in there, that makes a whole different outlook on it. 
kind of scary. I want to ask you this morning, are you all people of God? Is there anybody in here not a people of God? Because we're going to camp out for about two weeks until you are. We got to be people of God. True people of God. And when you put the word true in front of it, that gets a little shaky and scary, doesn't it? Are you obedient? Didn't hear any answers there. <laughs> Y'all were true children of God in the beginning. Don't we all fall short? Yes. Every one of us, don't we? And you know what? We can get in a place we get so guilty that we just sit down and we think God can't use us. God doesn't want anything to do with me. And we just sit and watch and listen. Are you true and obedient? Only you can answer that. See, this, is, this story applies to all of us today. It's just as real. That's what I love about this scripture. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like God is. And when we read it, and we're in our circumstance, it hits us right between the eyes. It did a, a thousand years ago, and it does yet today. And until God comes, Jesus comes, it's going to be living word for us. We can't get out of God's sight. God sees evil in his people. That's scary. But at the same time as I got that thought in my mind, I thought, you know what? He sees the good we do too. He's a good and faithful, just God. But God sees evil in his people. Uh, the NIV Habakkuk uh, 1.13 tells us, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? See, in that time they were asking God, why? Why do you let those wicked people be wicked? And we've already seen in the scripture here with Gideon that God will use the wicked to draw the righteous back to him. Everything that we experience is for God's purpose and plan, church. It may not be comfortable or feel good for us, but it will work out his purpose and plan. If our desires is evil, God will allow us to experience real evil. I'm telling you, he turned those Israelites over to the Midianites, and those people were king at evil. They knew how to get her done. And you know what? I don't think we've ever had to train any human being on this earth to be evil, do you? <laughs> we just learn it, don't we? How many times has a little kid slapped you or scratched you or done something because they didn't like what you were doing? Just a little rascal you're holding in your arms. We don't have to train people to be mean and evil. It's in the heart. But boy, God is God. And he says, if you want evil, just turn you over and you can see what evil is. God forbid any of us are still left at the end time when God lifts his hand of favor off this place and lets Satan have his way. Can you imagine? The next point I want to say is our storm can last. How many of us have experienced something in our lives that just seemed to hang on forever? You said, Lord, why? He turned these people over for seven years. Choices have consequences, church. And God will forgive us as far as the east is from the west, never to bring it up again. But I'm telling you what, our consequence, our, our mess for our sin follows us until we learn and grow from it. 
God hands them over for seven years. Seven is completeness or perfection. God hands them over for seven years so they completely get the picture. You don't want to do this again, Israelites. You're my true and obedient people and I need you back. And I'm telling you, church, how many times have we ever bailed somebody out of trouble or helped them get past their pain only for them to go right back to it instantly? God has us in our mess. He teaches us a lesson so we don't forget it. That's the way we stay faithful and true. And how many times have we prayed to our God to take me out of this mess, Lord? Just take me out of this mess. And we ought to be praying, Lord, help me to learn as quick as I can learn and get me through this mess so I can look back at it and think it's miles away. But we want him to do action instead of send his true word to us and change our hearts and minds. That's the only thing that lasts. The next thing I was thinking about, how cruel they were, it says. God can appear to be cruel to people. He can even appear to be cruel to us. How many know that God is love and evil is cruel? Our God is not a cruel God. Our God doesn't send us to hell. We send ourselves to hell by our choices and decisions. Amen. Our God is a loving God that loved us so much that he sent his son to die on that cross for us so we didn't have to die that death. Our storm can last. It lasts long enough till we remember. God's love can appear to be cruel, but he's not cruel, church. And Satan understands his authority in it all. The coolest thing about Satan is he knows he's defeated. And God has him ruler right now of this earth. And he's got just a little bit of time to get his mess done. And what I love about God and Satan, God has his hand on Satan. I remember the words, and most of you in here do too. You can have him talking about Job, but you can't kill him. Nowhere in this scripture did we read anybody died from starvation or from the mess that those people were creating. God will turn us over to teach us a lesson, but he wants us alive. He never wants to kill us. He wants us to have abundant life. I was thinking about the, the Romans and how they would beat people. And God even had his finger on them. 39 lashes is all that those guys could give because if they hit you the 40th time, you were dead. God has always had his hand of control on us. He's the giver and the author. He's the, he takes away. I love that song, this is the air I breathe. He's the one that gives us our last breath on this earth. The next thing that hit me is we hide in our storm. It says they went into the mountains, the caves, and the strongholds. And when I read stronghold, I thought, man, fear's a stronghold. And, and bondage, oppression. But I looked it up, and in the Greek, stronghold here is a place of survival or refuge. And you know what? All of us in our storms, in our trouble, try to put up walls and create a safe place for us to be. Every one of us can put on a mask from time to time. But you got to face your giant head on. Does anybody know that? Yes. You can hide and hide. And while you're quiet and still, they can surround you bigger and harder than they were before you started. And I'm just wondering, what would have happened 
If those Israelites would have apologized and, and, and said, Lord, we just really messed up here. We need you to love us and protect us and guide us. If they would have had to go through that whole seven year process. God did hear them. He heard them. And he sent help. But I want us to know that we can't run fast enough or far enough to get away from our trouble. Dave Ramsey says on, on, uh, on our um, financial peace, broke, dumb, and stupid will be there waiting on you when you arrive. We know a couple now that run away, and when they got there, the trouble was waiting on them. God's working on them. It'll be a process, but he's going to get her done. His way will prevail. Jesus is our refuge, our safe hiding place. And we've got to get that in our hearts, church. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nothing can take his place. Next point, we sow in our own strength. And when we do that, somebody else reaps our harvest. Those Israelites sowed and worked and worked and worked. Only to lose it to those Midianites. And you know what? They had no remorse. They could care less. They just come in and took it all. Their crops, their cattle, everything. Everything they needed to survive, they took it. And they didn't care. And there's some people in this land today that will do the same thing to us. We've got one working our clothes bins over out here right now. I've confronted that little chick twice and she don't get it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Jesus is our refuge. When we sow in our own strength, we sow, uh, we just sow a mess. And I think about being from a farming background, Kyle, and there's a bunch of us in here that know weeds will take our, our, our crops over. We got to work. We got to stay faithful and busy. And you know what? When we sow bad seed and we take a step at a time and we turn around and look, bad stuff keeps following us. And then we finally grab a hold of Jesus and start sowing good seed. And we walk one step at a time. And the next thing you know, we see good stuff starting to sprout. And that dead stuff dies back there. We can't look back there and, and, and focus on that mess back there. We have to focus on what is good and growing and following us. The seed that we're planting is good stuff. It's on good ground. And then I wrote down this thought for you that uh, you may like, may not. When we sow into God's kingdom, he only takes 10% and we've got 90 left. Isn't that a profound thought? These Midianites are taking everything. But if we love God and we're focused on His plan and purpose, He only hopes for us to give Him 10%. And we can have 90 to just bless everything and do what we need to do. Trouble follows trouble. It never ends. And we've got to face our giants head on. Trouble stays till it strips us bare. Only when we're at rock bottom and surrender, we look up. I was thinking when they were singing that song this morning, when we hit rock bottom, the only way we have to look is up. And we cry out, Jesus. That's when he intervenes. When he walks and, and works with us and talks to us and leads and guides us. God hears our every cry. Psalm 34, 17, The Lord hears His people when they call to Him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. I love that. How many troubles does He rescue us from? All of them. James 5, we, we anointed Chris the other night and prayed James 5 over him. If any of you are sick, let him call upon the elders. 
There's something about calling, crying out to God, people, that brings healing and, and a touch from the Lord to us. Karen and I can say, you know what, we need to go pray over Rob Sloan. But what is so cool is when Vicky calls and says, will you come and pray over us? We need you. God worked. God turned those fearful thoughts of cancer into a diverticula that was able to be removed. No cancer whatsoever. There's power in calling on our God, church. We have to cry out to him. And the next thing you know, we're on these stupid cell phones calling our girlfriend and hoping she's going to tell us what we want to hear. Instead of having a direct line to Jesus and saying, Lord, help me. I need you, Lord. God hears us when we call. Psalm 18.6 But in my distress, it's in our distress, church, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. Can you believe it that we can be on planet earth and God only knows how far heaven is away and he hears our every cry. And you know what? There's no interference. Nothing. Tom and I uh, got a new camera this last week and... Uh, They've got the sound hooked from the soundboard into it now and the picture's beautiful for YouTube. And then we took the old camera and mounted it on the wall over there and it's going to be focused on Tammy so we can get our deaf ministry back up and running. And Tom and I went back to that nursery and static, I mean just... So we worked two days on it and we finally got it gone. Praise God. He didn't want us piping that back in there for the nursery workers to be able to hear. They're static all around us. In church, we got to get tuned into Jesus. All we hear is the interference and the static around us. And we got to get past it. The only way is to Jesus. And if I don't get to this grain cleaner, somebody's going to skin me alive. I'm six pages away yet. God expects us to work through our suffering. You know what? We can get in a place we suffer and we're in pain and we hurt and we feel like we can't throw the next foot ahead of the other one. And we quit. Have you ever been in a place you've lost hope and you just want to give up and quit? Yes. We've been there, haven't we, all of us? But God expects us to keep on keeping on. Many in our sufferings give up, but God sees Gideon working. He's threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, I was going to call Tim up and see if he'd bring his uh, cider press in for me because that's kind of, sort of, a little bit more like a wine press. But we settled for my father-in-law's green cleaner. And Gideon has got some grain, and the story doesn't tell us how he ends up with this grain, but he's got grain to thresh. And that's the way our God is. When there's nothing available, it's there. Can I get an amen? Have you ever wondered, where did that come from? Nyla, how much did you end up? 200 was it? $20 extra. $20 extra in her missions money this week. There you go. But Gideon is working. He's, he's threshing this grain that he's got left for food, for his family, and God only knows how many more people. But he knows that if he threshes it on the threshing floor, the Midianites are going to steal it. And he's up on top of this hill. The threshing floor was always on the top of a hill. 
and they would beat the grain and the oats and the wheat and whatever they had would come out and then all the holes would be mixed in and they'd take a shovel and flip it in the air as high as they could throw it and the wind would blow that chaff and all the impurities out of there and then the grain would land on the, on the threshing floor. Now that's what this thing kind of sort of is. Uh, Barbara and Karen both used this when they were kids with their dad. It's, a, it's really a seed cleaner. And it took the, the seeds and the holes and everything out. And then the grain would run out of it. And it was pure. And it was graded. There's screens in here and it kept falling through. And the little stuff would fall in the bottom as trash. And the good stuff would come out. And it would be bagged up. And you could either use it for, for food or you could replant it. The biggest goal was to replant seed. Have seed to, to sow the next time. And I brought this to show us that this is kind of a more modern thing. Now we've got great big old green machine combines that are as wide as this room, one swath, and it shakes it all out and cleans it and puts it in a hopper. But back in Midian's day and, and, and Gideon's day, they had to flip that wheat in the air and let the chaff. And he knew that those Midianites would see it and steal it all. And a wine press, for the most part, was dug in the ground, and they'd get in there, and they'd stomp them grapes with their bare feet. Now, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> you might have purple feet when you were done, but that'd be cool to have, feel that goo in, through your toes. And... The deal is, grapes weren't on then. And Gideon thinks... I'll take the wheat and thresh it in there. And they won't even suspect I'm up there. Because it's out of season. God provides for us different seasons, church, to protect us and use us. He provides everything we need. And Gideon was thinking out of the box. He gets in the wine press and threshes these wheat. Now, how many are disappointed that's all this was here for? <laughs> God just wants us doing his work, staying faithful and trusting us, church, to reach out and do what he needs us to do. And he'll cover the rest. We're going to get into that scripture later down the road here. But Gideon was thinking out of the box. He used the wine press for a threshing floor. God's proud of us when we use what he provides for us. God doesn't want us quitting. There are no losers, only quitters, and quitters lose. I say that so many times because it's so true. God has provided the way. Another point, God, with God, all things are possible. And that's where I'm closing. I want us to get that in our hearts the next couple of weeks. That we have everything we need, church, to be Christ followers. To be a light in a dark place. The light in the end is going to dispel that evil and darkness. In church, there's evil all around us. We have never been needed more importantly than we are right now. There's evil everywhere. We're to the place that Romans says it'll get so bad they'll invent evil. I'm telling you, this new drug, I forget the name of it, it's killing people. They invented that, mixed a bunch of junk together, and they're selling it. That's inventing evil. There's enough to do us in without inventing that crap. And we're taking it in. There's evil everywhere. And God is looking for a few good men and women to be glorious and righteous and upright, to be life changers. And that's you and me. If we don't get it done, church, who is going to?
And the way we show God's glory is to be faithful to him and be obedient. And do the best we can. And then when we fall, we just turn around and we look at the cross and say, Thank you, Jesus, for your love, mercy, and grace. And get back up and get going again. You know what? The many nights might hit us all. But we ain't starving to death, church. God always takes care of his remnant, his chosen people. But I want to tell you what. He cleans the house with us first. You know what? Those Midianites were back there 2,000 years ago. But when Jesus comes back, every one of them is going to stand in front of the Lord God the Father. And say, but God, you had me stealing all their food. And he'll say, yeah. And I told you, in my word, if you would have listened. If anybody has need, you meet it. And he can go on and on and on. Those Midianites will not talk to the Lord when judgment comes. There will be no excuse good enough. So let's trust in God. Let's be willing to step out in the faith we've got and do what God's called us to do. Church, the fields are white for the harvest and the workers are few. We need more workers. We've got enough chairs in here for 320 workers. We've got to get them. Time short. We're going to go on and, and just really hear some cool stuff that Gideon does. Uh, get, just pick up your Bible and read Judges 6 and go on. Read right on through to 8. We, we won't touch 8 much. But just see what happens in the end. It'll blow your mind. That's why we need Jesus. Father, I just thank you for every person in this room. Lord, I pray that every person in this room can become a Gideon. Lord, we need to be Israel. We need to be Israelites. True and obedient children of God. And Lord, there are so many of us in this room that try so hard every day to be that. And Lord, we slip and fall. But your grace picks us up, brushes us off, and sends us on our merry way again. And all you ask us to do is don't do that anymore. And Lord, if we do it again, there could be a seven-year process waiting on us. Help us to know you're a loving God, not cruel. Lord, the world needs a loving God. And that's you. So we just thank you for the opportunity to be here today. We thank you for the day of rest you've uh, given us. We thank you that you love us and bless us like you do. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior. He saved us from our wicked ways, Lord. Help us to lay the old down and for all things to become brand new. Lord, we just love you and praise you. We want to be found in your, uh, your book of, of Hall of Fame for the faithful. Because Lord, we need to hear when we enter heaven, job well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, go with us. As we study, as we uh, learn to grow here and, and try to be more faithful, we know uh, uh, Satan. He's just going to come around, knock on our door harder than he's ever knocked. And Lord, uh, we know he's a loser. He's a liar. He's a thief. He has no ability to kill us. So Lord, we're going to stand firm. We're going to trust you and praise you and glorify you. And we're going to do it all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. Listen, if you guys need prayer of any kind, uh, the elders are going to be up here to pray over you this morning. Um, don't leave here with a mess, with a need. And uh, if you need to confess something, come up here. These guys and gals keep everything you say right here. 
leave here lifted up and renewed and restored. Go with God. He loves you and so do we.